Alrighty, hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us today for the virtual college exploration for all North Carolina and South Carolina students. Sponsored by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers in StriveScan. Thank you all for joining us today. So just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenter at any time. Your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at cacrao.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be made available within about a week at that same website, cacrao.org. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenter. Thank you, Addison. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And my name is Dylan Gerald. I'm an Associate Director of Admission at Washington and Jefferson College. And before I really get started, um, I do have a short video that I want to show. Woo! Yeah! Welcome to W and J! So that was a quick, oh gosh, that was a quick video with some of our current students, our president, um, and it was at our new student orientation. Um, so that's just a little bit of what you can expect um, whenever you start at WNJ. Um, but I will start out with where we are. We are um, in the state of Pennsylvania, in Western Pennsylvania. So we're in Washington County. Um, we're at the seat of Washington County and it's about 30 minutes away from Pittsburgh. So from North Carolina, we are six and a half hours away from Charlotte, about the same away from Raleigh, Durham, <clears throat> um, and the rest kind of varies. Um, but these are some of the major cities um, across the country and our distances from them. And if you've never been to Pittsburgh, I did wanna add this picture um, just so you can see it. Pittsburgh itself is a beautiful city, as you can see. Um, and it's a really old city, but there is a lot to do. Um, a lot of arts, a lot of culture. Theater is pretty big here as well. Um, and then everyone knows the Steelers and the Penguins and the Pirates. Um, but our next slide will show just a few of the great things about Pittsburgh. Um, one thing most people don't know is that it's a really big food city. Um, there's a Permani sandwich famous in Pittsburgh, um, but a lot of really great things. One of the highlights, I guess, is that it's a number one travel destination for Gen Z students. Um, so there is a lot of fun, a lot of fun to happen in the city. Um, a lot of festivals. Very easy to get internships and jobs with all of the Fortune 500 companies and startups in the area. Um, Duolingo was founded in Pittsburgh and niche.com is also from Pittsburgh. Just a brief history, WNJ um, was actually founded as two separate colleges in 1781. And we merged together in, 16, in 1865 um, during the war. Um, we were both male residential colleges and there was a draft. Um, so the two colleges decided to um, kind of join together. We're named after the presidents, um, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. And the picture on the top left is actually the oldest building on our campus. Um, it is from before um, Washington College was founded. 
And it's still there today and our president and our communications department um, are both housed in that building. Very beautiful and lots of history there. Academics is very important to WNJ and WNJ students. Um, so we are a private liberal arts institution and we really like being a small school. Um, our student to faculty ratio is 10 to one and 75% of our classes have less than 20 students in them. And that's really intentional. We want to make sure that our students have a connection with their faculty and with their professors, but also with the greater campus community as a whole. Um, as you can see on the screen, our faculty, for the most part, hold terminal degrees in their fields, but they also have a lot of experience, not just in the classroom, but um, they, for the most part, worked in their field before um, starting to teach. They're really here to teach. We're not a large research institution, um, and their main, their main goal is to, to educate young people. Um, I'll touch on study abroad a little bit more later, but a lot of our students will choose to go abroad. Here's our full list of majors and minors. Um, I will not read through all of them for you, but a couple of things to note about our academic programs. Um, it is very popular for WNJ students to double major. Um, about 40% of our students will choose two majors. Um, and we have some pretty interesting combinations, but some of the more common ones are biology and Spanish for pretty obvious reasons. Um, one of my favorites is public policy and environmental science. The students who do that will often choose to go into environmental law. So by having two different majors, they're able to focus in a little bit more um, on each of those areas and make themselves stand out whenever they're you know, applying to grad school and um, going off to do that. So this is a full list. Um, we are undergoing a strategic plan right now where every student will have two academic programs upon graduation. So that may be a double major like most of our students now, or it may be a major and a minor or um, any combination of, of all of the different opportunities. We do have a lot of pre-professional programs as well and some partnerships that go along with those. So with 3-2 Engineering, we do not have engineering as a major at WNJ. However, we partner with Case Western Reserve University, Washington University in St. Louis, and Columbia University in New York. Um, with those programs, you'll do three years at WNJ in a major that you choose. And then um, you would spend two years at the other institution um, and graduate with two degrees, one in whatever major you choose from WNJ, and then one in engineering at um, the partner school. Washington University also has a 3-3 program, and that is to get two undergrad degrees and a master's in engineering. Um, education and teacher certification, we have a 100% uh, pass rate on the Praxis exam, so we do a really good job of getting students um, into that. But we also, um, when it comes to student teaching, our students are teaching in the Pittsburgh area, um, also in Ohio and West Virginia. And then we also have a partnership with Puerto Rico where students can do their um, student teaching abroad as well. Um, that tends to be pretty popular too. Um, Pre-health and pre-law are two of the programs that we're most known for. Um, Pre-health is kind of an umbrella, so that covers, you know, med school, vet, dental, pharmacy, um, physician assistant, physical therapy, occupational therapy. Um, in general, we have over 90% acceptance rates to all pre-health program schools um, and 100% on vet and pharmacy and physician, physician assistant. Um, Pre-law over the past I don't know, 30 years, we have a 90% acceptance rate as well. Um, and we don't have any specific feeder schools that we're sending our students to. It's really up to them. Um, so it's like some of our students will go to like Pitt, Penn State, um, but 
really, they're all over the place. We've had students that go to UNC Chapel Hill, Wake Forest, um, UC Berkeley, UMBC. Um, it really just depends on what the student wants, um, where they wanna go geographically, um, and what kind of program. We also have our OTC, and that is for Army, Air Force, and National Guard. All of the classes with ROTC are on our campus. Um, one of the most unique things about WNJ is our Magellan Project. Um, I know that it is listed under academics, but it doesn't necessarily have to be within your academic program. It's really designed to be an experience where you can create your own project really in any area that you want to um, and travel the world or stay domestic if you want um, and just study something. Um, listed on the screen are a couple of examples, but I do wanna point out um, Clara on the right. She is a current senior and she's a Spanish major and her Magellan project was on the culture of immigration in Spain and Morocco. She um, always wanted to go to Morocco and she has family from Spain. So she really wanted to, you know, find a way to get into both countries at the same time. Um, so that's how she kind of landed on immigration culture. Um, while she was there, she started out in Tangier and worked and then back down to um, Tangier. She met with immigrants, refugees, um, met with government officials, local, um, local residents, um, and just got an idea of what the culture is like in terms of immigration. Um, so that was a really cool um, experience, being able to hear from her about her trip and how it went. Um, and there are tons of stories. We've been doing the Magellan Project for about 10 years and um, really, we've given over a million dollars away in funding in the last 10 years. Um, and it, it just continues to grow. The whole point of this is to get you out of your comfort zone um, and to really give you an experience that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Next is study abroad, my favorite. Um, w and is really big on study abroad. Our um, you'll see a couple of pictures listed here, but um, again, 40% of our students will go abroad at some point. Um, it really is up to the student if they want to or not, but um, it is very popular. We have your traditional semester long abroad and there are 35 partners in 20 countries. Um, we are on every continent except for Antarctica. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity there but we also have J-Term, which is a little bit less common in the Carolinas. It's a intercession. So it's between um, fall semester and spring semester. So it's two weeks long in January. And that's another way to go with a class somewhere else. Um, and they're really meant to be like travel tours. One really good example is a theater tour of London or um, an environmental tour of Arizona um, to, to discover the borderlands and what's happening um, with immigration down there. Um, the two pictures on the left here are really good um, estimates of the size of the class that will happen. Um, but all of these are um, J-term classes that are shown. There's lots to do on our campus. Um, we have 70 different clubs and organizations. Really, if there's a club that you want to start that we don't have, it's really easy to start one as well. Um, all you really need is an idea and a couple friends, but there are tons to choose from, um, as well as some performing art groups that I'll mention too. Um, but our organizations range. Um, there are a couple different buckets that I like to put them all in some social organizations like the Black Student Union, Gender and Sexuality Association, the Halal Club for our Jewish students, um, and the list really goes on with them. Um, there's also a lot of clubs that are just revolving around things to do, like Equestrian, 
the coloring club, the Nitwits. Um, that club actually was just started a couple of years ago, and it was a group of girls who just wanted, who were already knitting together in their suite, in their residence hall. And they just brought it to student life and said, you know what, we're gonna open this up to the rest of the campus. Um, and now it's a pretty thriving club, um, which I think is pretty cool. We also have intramural sports and club sports on campus. So that is an option. And then in terms of um, performance organizations, there are three instrumental and three choral groups. The three instrumental groups are the marimba ensemble, the um, jazz ensemble, and then there's a concert orchestra. As far as vocal goes, there is the camarada singers, which is our, our audition choir. There's the concert choir, um, which will be for a class. And then there's the Jaybirds, which is our acapella group. So there's a lot of ways to kind of get involved there. Um, we also have a theater on campus as well. And they'll do two main stage shows a year and then several student run shows um, where the students will write, direct and perform everything. Um, so there's really a lot going on there. Um, we are a division three institution and we have 26 different programs. We have most of your normal programs, um, but some of the for instance, swimming and diving. Um, we do have water polo. Um, lacrosse is pretty popular. Um, we do have football, obviously. And one thing to note is that we're always at the top of our conference um, for most sports. So we have a long tradition of winning um, and we plan on keeping it that way. Um, if anyone is interested in playing a sport in college and they're not sure, um, I honestly recommend reaching out to our coaches. You can either find their information on our athletics website and contact them that way, or you can fill out a recruiting questionnaire, um, which is the form to give your stats and your contact information so they can then reach out to you. Um, it really is up to you, whichever you prefer, but I think that might be a good route to take. The last thing I wanted to mention in terms of student life is just some of the support that you'll have on our campus. Um, I think it's really important to know that once you get somewhere that you'll have you know, people to go to um, and just a group of people that want to help make sure that you succeed. So we do this very intentionally with our Navigate program and it's really meant to be a first year experience program. So um, at most colleges, you'll have an FYS class that stands for first year seminar. Your professor for that FYS class will be your academic advisor before you declare your major. You don't have to declare your major until end of sophomore year, but they're there to make sure that you graduate on time, that you're meeting all the graduation requirements um, and that you're um, progressing toward a major at least. Um, in addition to that, academic advisor, you'll also have a peer mentor, and that is a current student. You know, they are upperclassmen who are really just there to show you the ropes. Um, they've all been in college before, and you may not have been to an instant, like living on a campus. Um, so they're just there to help with all of that stuff. Um, we also have student success consultants, and they're there to help you um, really on the career side of things. You can kind of think of them as a school counselor, but at the college level, they're going to help you write a resume freshman year and um, really add things to it. Like, I mean, it could be really anything, but um, any clubs and organizations, study abroad, maybe you wanna play a sport, um, maybe you wanna do a Magellan project or J term classes or anything like that. Um, they'll kind of think of things that you can add, add there. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, we do have over 90% um, pre-health and pre-law acceptances. Um, in 2017, we actually had 100% acceptance rate um, in all grad school programs, but on average, it tends to be um, a little bit over 90% in this community. Um, and in 2019, 
our graduates had a 97% um, rate of students who had jobs within their field or were in grad school within their field within six months of graduating. Um, so I just think that speaks to the level of success that our students were able to have um, while they're at WNJ as well as after. Um, really our whole thing is we want students to be able to get wherever they want to go um, really by whatever means necessary um, within reason, but um, we just want to make sure that our students are able to do the things that they want to do. So I think that's a pretty common theme across campus. Now I'll talk a little bit about next steps. We, um, for the people who are considering transferring right now, we do have the Common Application or the WJ Leadership app. Um, both applications are free, but you can choose whichever one you would rather do. Um, the WNJ leadership application takes about 15 or 20 minutes to complete. Um, the Common App can take a lot longer, but we will accept either. All that we really require is a transcript um, from high school and college. And then um, there's also a transfer clearance form um, attached to that as well. <clears throat> um, but you may decide that you wanna submit your test scores from senior year or a personal statement or a letter of rec. All of that stuff is optional, but regardless, we make decisions on a rolling basis. So regardless of what um, application you choose, you will be notified within about two or three weeks. <clears throat> um, here are all of our application deadlines. Um, we really, um, for our transfer students, operate on a rolling admission basis. Um, so there isn't a, a really hard deadline for that, um, but the first three are mainly for our first year students. Um, but submit it before August 1. That's the, that's the key. Um, all of our students are um, reviewed for scholarship upon application, regardless of whether you're a freshman or a transfer. So you will be eligible for these scholarships as well. Um, I wanna point out the WNJ Thrive, that is for students with a 3.6 unweighted GPA and um, a leadership component on the application. Things that we mean by leadership are um, involvement in like National Honor Society, Model UN, anyone who's an officer in a club at their high school or college, um, anyone who is like a mentor tutor, teacher, coach, et cetera, um, all of those things would count. So make sure that you list those on the application. If you don't have any of that stuff, you can still get any of the other um, scholarships like the presidential scholars or deans. Um, and we are a score optional institution. So if you don't have test scores, um, you'll be mostly evaluated on your, on your GPA. Um, scholarships are released a week after an admission decision, so you can expect that shortly after knowing that you're admitted. Um, in terms of financial aid, we offer the same aid for freshmen as we do for transfer students as well. Um, and we have one of the top financial aid programs in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, almost all of our students receive financial aid, financial assistance in some way. Um, our average institutional aid was $30,000 per year, um, but it really depends on what your, you know, family income situation looks like. So I encourage every, every family, regardless, to submit a FAFSA. That's a free application for federal student aid, and that will help us determine what institutional and federal aid you're eligible for. Um, WNJ as an institution gives away a lot of WNJ college grants for, um, a various number of things, but a couple of different ones are, for example, the visit grant. That's $1,000 just for coming to see us on campus. Um, we also give the visit grant for virtual visitors as well. So if you're not able to make the trip up to Pennsylvania, schedule a, vir a virtual visit to meet with me, um, and you would also get that. For our out-of-state students, we give um, at least $2,000 in WNJ college grant money for being not from the state of Pennsylvania. Um, there may be a lot more 
than that though. Um, so I just, again, recommend everyone filling out the FAFSA um, and we'll start sending out financial aid offers really two weeks after um, a scholarship has been sent out. So um, yeah, for the dates here, um, October 1st is when the FAFSA opened. Um, we do ask that people file for financial aid before February if possible. That is the last day that we guarantee financial aid, but there may be, um, there may continue to be funds until the end of the year. Um, and then with National Decision Day, that's mostly for freshmen. Um, for transfer students, as soon as you know that you're ready to come to WNJ, we want you to submit your deposit and enroll. Um, but I guess the official deadline would be August 1st. Um, so, yeah. And that is the end. I'm gonna see if there are any questions um, that I get. It doesn't look like I have any right now, but um, one of the more common questions that I get from transfer students is, um, how will I know if my credits transfer? Um, I understand that that's something that's very important, especially to transfer students. Um, what I recommend is sending us a um, copy of your transcript, even if that's an unofficial copy. Our registrar is able to do preliminary and official evaluations of transcripts in a pretty timely manner. Um, so if you're concerned about that whatsoever, definitely you know, send me a copy of your transcript. And then within a couple of weeks, you should know exactly what will transfer. Um, and um, that way we can kind of help prepare um, your course listing for the rest of your time. So yeah, should be pretty simple. Um, but if there isn't anything else, I will hand it back over to Addison. Um, but thank you all for joining me. All right, thank you everyone for joining us today. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We would really appreciate any feedback you can provide today. This is just one of the many different sessions happening and you can find the full schedule at cacrao.org. That's cacro.org. The session will be made available within about a week at that same website, cacrao.org. Have a great day, everyone.